Hey, dear Tyler, good morning. And how are you doing? I hope you're good. I truly hope you're fine. Um, happy new week. So apparently, April is coming to an end. And I guess the year is moving pretty, pretty fast, right? Um, things are just like happening a lot. And I don't know if it's something that comes with age or if really like time is, is getting faster. Okay, but it's been, it's been a very quick year so far. It's been a very quick year so far. Uh, thank you so much for all the reviews. Thank you so much for all the comments on the previous um, episodes, the last two episodes that we had. And I really hope that it um, it it left a, a, an impact in you. I truly hope that it was able to help you to, you know, make the right decisions and um, work in the right work in the right path, right? Like I said, for me, dear Tyler, sharing these stories or sharing these thoughts are, you know, to personal contemplations here and there. But primarily, it's to be able to give hope, one, and then it's also to, you know, hopefully give some level of direction. Yeah, one thing is that our vision is limited in life and it's very, very important to be able to see things from the perspective of others. Uh, I don't consider my perspective as law. I do not consider my perspective as the standard, but I do hope that my perspective can give light to certain, you know, circumstances or certain um, issues, depending on the time and the individual. So. Sincerely, from the depth of my heart, I really do hope that each episode is helping each and every one of us to be able to make the right decisions. Uh, for today's episode, I'm taking our time to talk on the topic, I'm your number one fan. I'm your number one fan. There was this song by Canton Jones that we used to sing way back in the days. Um, It was, the title of the song is I'm Your Number One Fan. You can check it out. It's a beautiful song. Um, he was basically, you know, expressing his, his obsession about God, you know, like, uh, oh, sorry. It was like the other way, like God expressing his obsession about you, yes. So it was just like a little story, God and individuals. You know, just generally talking um, and, you know, just expressing his heart to them. And I remember a lot of guys back then, uh, because Canton Jones has an amazing voice, so a lot of guys back then had a way of, you know, taking the song and making it a proposal kind of thing. So they would go over to a lady and was starting in, I'm your number one fan. Was it? Or something like that. It's a beautiful song. I could check it out. Right, but what um, what really got to me was, um, you know, the whole expression about fandom. The whole expression about fandom. I'm a Chelsea supporter. I don't think I consider myself a fan. But being a Chelsea supporter slash fan, in this season has been particularly um, troublesome. It's It's been a vicious cycle of pain, a vicious cycle of anxiety, a vicious cycle of uncertainty. We, we've, for the past like 20 years plus, Chelsea have been known for being a top club, you know, and I um, mean, you know, winning a lot of trophies, intimidating people. And, you know, because it was within a very short span of time that the club came into limelight, in quote, um, we garnered a lot of, garnered a lot of enemies, a lot of enemies, right? So this period we've been losing, like we've been on a losing streak consistently. Things have just been horrible. 
And being a Chelsea fan or supporter has been bad. Well, it's been terrible. It's been terrible. You know, you can't go on social media, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you won't see some slight, you know, or some some jabs, you know, people throwing jabs at you. But I, one thing I can relate to, right, is the fact, the obsession that we have about the club. Like, irrespective of the fact that our club loses, right, every time we have a match, we still go either to watch the match, either we follow the match or something. There is this hope that we have that um, things will turn around. Now, we used to have this discussion way back then about how um, how men are probably more loyal than women. It's not a, I'm not saying that that's true. Well, it was just an example that we used, right? That we usually use to describe the strength of a loyalty of a man, especially when he believes in something, right? Now, have you noticed that guys have the same barber or the hairdress or do we call them barbers, right? They have the same barber for years. The only thing that will make them change the barber, right, or the only things that will make them change where they have their hair cut is if they change location or the business runs out of, I mean, you know, I mean, the people go out of business or something. But typically, the place where they get their haircut is consistent. And they usually, and they usually have a particular person that cuts their hair. So usually when they go to the, um, the hair salon, they just go straight once they get inside, you know, they sit down. In fact, the person having their, I mean, giving them the haircut knows them. And they're like, hey boss, how far? Something like that. Now, typically for ladies, they they can change, you know, change hairdressers here and there. Maybe they find somewhere new and they'll be like, oh, let me try this place. Um, or let me try this other hairdresser. And yeah, if they do find a good hairdresser, they, they do stay with it. But um, I think for men, there's this high level of loyalty um, when it comes to that. And it's also seen in football clubs, you know, so... Like an Arsenal fan, right? Over the years, they've not really had it good. And, you know, many times they'll come up and they'll be shouting, they'll be angry. You know, they'll be fed up with the whole system of um, the club. But every season, they come back hopeful. Like, this is our season, this is our season. And apparently this year, this season has been the best for them. They've been exceptional. It, which does not make me happy as an individual, right? They're my rivals. It doesn't make me happy. But they've been exceptional. You have, you have to give it to them, right? And that's how it happens every year, right? Um, we always start with a newfound hope. There's this newfound belief. It doesn't even have to get to a new season or a new year when it comes to a club or sports team that you're supporting. What you just have is that deep within your heart, somehow you feel that the next game is always going to be better. We, when we are obsessed about something, when we're obsessed about um, a team, an organization, even if uh, they fail, right, at any point in time, there is this newfound belief or there's this benefit of a doubt that we give them consistently that this year or this opportunity is going to be better. This opportunity is going to be better. People that have maybe support, you know, all of these um, combat sports people, right? So somebody loses and then they'll be like, no, the next time we're going to get it. Right, so think about Israel uh, Adeshanya, right? That MMA fighter. He fought a particular guy um, three times and lost, right? And he fought him the fourth time and he won and regained his title. You know, at every point in time when he was going to fight the guy, not knowing that he was going to lose and everything, but his, his supporters, you know, kept on believing that this is our time, this is our time, this is our time, this is our time, right? And that's what happens when you are a fan of someone right you give that benefit of the doubt i was having this discussion with um one of the the elderly people in our worship team you know um i love to learn and i love to meet people that have gone through certain things that i am going through and to see how they came out of it right and 
So I'm, I'm very open to express myself and, you know, just sit down and learn from people that I've gone ahead. And so we're talking and Mrs. Jokins, right? And, you know, she said something about love that really got to me. She said that during one of the KSOM classes, that apostle mentioned something to them, that the scripture says, um, love your neighbor, right? As you love yourself. Now, I know that there's a whole lot of controversy um, against, you know, that particular verse of scripture, if it's still valid, because Jesus now says that a new commandment I give unto you, as I have loved you, that you love one another. But I think that, irrespective of whatever viewpoint that individuals may have, one thing that I think is very valid is what Apostle actually shared with them, that she shared with me, that I would share with you. He says that the scripture says that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So he said that if the love you give to people is something that you cannot gladly give yourself, then your love is not pure. If the love you give to people is not um, the love that you can give to yourself, that you cannot comfortably give to yourself, then your love is not pure. It's either that you're under pressure, you're trying to make an impression to prove a point, or you're under duress or something. Jigget. But if the actions that you give to people or you do for people are not the things that you can do for yourself, then that action in itself is not pure. The action in itself is not pure. And it got me thinking, and you know, and that's what pushed you to do this episode because we are a fan of many things. You know, we've got our favorite um, brand. We've got our favorite um, sports team. We've got our favorite mentors, right? We've got our favorite institutions. You know, whatever it is, especially in a competitive world, right? We've got those that we usually side towards. But how much of support have we given to ourselves? How much of support have we given to ourselves? Because usually when we mess up or when we do wrong or when we fall short of certain standards, right? Or it may not even be that you're falling when you're in the circle of other people that are within your, um, within your, within your, your craft, within your skill. How much support do you give yourself? How much support do you give yourself? Many times we, we spend a lot of time hoping that external forces will give us the motivation that we need right so we want somebody to validate us and you know consistently somebody will come over and be like i'm here for you um i believe in you you're gonna make it you're going to make it this time i know that uh, things didn't go well but this is the time now that you can do you understand and so many times we, we really love that um and, and, you know, I've been blessed by quite a lot of people, you know. L let me use the instance for, like, marriage, right? I've, I've been listening to quite a lot of people talk about marriage, um, especially Pastor Kingsley and Mildred Okunko. They're amazing, amazing people. And um, the windows, right? Now, one of the things that they said is that if you're going into marriage for completeness, then you've already started it wrong that you should be complete enough, right, in yourself before joining yourself with someone else. So the other person doesn't complete you, in quote, do you understand? Um, there are two complete people that come together to become one complete body. They're not two incomplete people trying to figure out how they can fit together. So it's one completeness meeting another completeness to form one body, which is complete in itself. Now, what happens is that a lot of people push their, um, their desire or they push the, the demand for validation, the demand for motivation on another, right? So to be like, oh, when I get married, this person is going to give me the support that I need. Now I'm going through a lot of things in my life because this person is absent, you know? And I think that it's a very dangerous thing to give somebody that responsibility. Now, am I saying that you'll not need people in your life? No. But you should understand that irrespective, right? 
You should understand that irrespective of the people in your life, you should be able to build yourself to the point that you can support you. So, you've got a music ministry, let's say like mine, or let me talk about podcasting. Now, there are a lot of podcasters, right, that are doing great and exceptional things, right? Nobody is disputing that fact. Nobody is disputing that fact. And for dear Tyler, we're coming up and God has been faithful. I will not deny the fact that God has been faithful. God has been extremely gracious and kind, you know, um, to me building this whole podcast. But it's not the best. And I agree. There are a lot of other people that are doing exceptionally well with their podcast. The mistake I will make is to uh, to lessen myself or to decrease what God is doing through dear Tyler because other people are doing better. It's it's, it's one of the big mistakes that we make. One of the big mistakes that we make. Another mistake that I would make is to expect my greatest support to come from external places. External support comes from, I mean, my greatest support comes from external places. That's, people are going through life, do you understand, right? And so it's, it's very possible that they could connect with you at certain levels, and then at some certain times, they could just ghost, ghost you. They're not ghosting you because they hate you, but they're also dealing with their own parts of life, right? So if my motivation comes from the fact that people are telling me that I am doing good, and not from the fact that I have realized how good and qualitative the things that I am doing are, right? Then I would literally enter into issues because there will be moments of silence. Like I said, not because these people hate you, but because everybody is dealing with seasons in their lives. So what will you do? What will you do? You know, one of the hardest things is for you to hold somebody in high esteem and expect a certain level of validation from them and then they don't give it to you. It can break you. It can break you to to unimaginable levels. It can break you, it can wreck you, it can destroy you. It's, it's absolutely horrible. And we always, we seem to always put ourselves in that position, always put ourselves in that position where we're looking for, oh, this great man, this great woman to kind of like validate what we are doing. And then most times they're just very silent about it. They don't even say a word. And your mind will be like, am I really that bad that this person cannot recognize me? Okay, let me add more effort so that I can be. No. You know, they're adding more effort so that you can be recognized. You know, you want to do more. And so the, the drive for what you're doing or the drive for every activity that you do is predicated on another individual's approval, not because you have recognized what you're doing is valuable. Not that, not because you have recognized that what you carry is special, not because you have understood that you have a potential that can be harnessed and improved upon. I used to have this major challenge because um, I had this major challenge of competition, right? So, not really competition, but comparison. So, I, I'd, I'd always spend a lot of time comparing myself with other people. And I'll be like, oh, this person is doing a lot better than me. This person is doing a lot better than me. This person has, um, has better skills than me. This person has better this, better this, better this. And so, usually, uh, let's say maybe I'm about to sing or something. And I go up on stage. What comes to mind are the various individuals that I consider as standards, right? And I, I basically live within that point of intimidation, not because they caused it, but because I built it within myself, right? Now, um, whenever that happens, 
I am overly conscious of my environment, overly conscious of the things around me, and I'm hoping that people will bring some form of validation. And it 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 usually it happens that things don't come out well. But every time I go with this bound belief that what God has placed in me is precious, and being that I support you, you've got an amazing voice. You are an exceptional, exceptional deep worshiper. You've got a very great heart for God. And I go with that consciousness. Something else just happens. Something just, you know, something else just happens. Never forget the ministration that I had when I was schooling in Bauchi. One of the, the first concerts that we had, um, Chapel of Victory, choir, choir day. I know I would never, ever forget it. When, you know, when it was time for me to, to sing, um, what happened was uh, the, the the music director, you know, was just encouraging me and, you know, telling me that, you know, this song is like one of the major songs. So I really need you to push it. I really need you to give your best. I really need you to do this. I really need you to do that. I really need you to do this. Do you understand? So when it was now time, I remember I took out time to pray because I had just left Zaria and there was a lot of... Um, things that Apostle had taught us back then, you know, about believing in yourself and stuff like that. So I took out time, I prayed and I remember that, oh, I'm a child of God and what God has placed in me is precious. I know that the Spirit of God wants to use me. He wants to communicate his heart through me. I wouldn't have been chosen if I didn't have the ability to do well. And so I believe in me and I'm going to go up and give my best, my goodness. I would never forget the reaction of Chapel that did. The whole place was just wild. It was just wild, like we couldn't like move away from that song. We kept on singing it and singing it and singing it. And you know, it opened up a lot of doors for me. It opened up a lot of doors for me, right? And you know, like I said, it left a very deep impression in my heart, right? But all of that came from, it was not self-centeredness, but the fact that I have, I had acknowledged what God had given me and I decided to appreciate it, right? I decided to appreciate it. Did I make mistakes during the rehearsals? Yes, I did, right? But just like a fan of a football team that gives his team an opportunity every day, is the same thing that I need to give myself. So if I fall short of a certain standard, there was something that was expected of me that I didn't hit up to, right? I don't go about bashing myself now. That's not what I should do. I should give myself the opportunity I should become my number one fan. I should become my number one fan. I should become the number one fan of my music. I should become the number one fan of my podcast. I should become the number one fan of my endeavors. I should become the number one fan of my of my business. I should become the number one fan of my skill. I should become the number one fan of my abilities and my potential. I should become my, the number one fan of it, right? So when you look at um, Philippians 4.13, Paul said something, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? There were times where I'm sure that people came and told him, like, Paul, I know you can do it. I know that you can make it. But he had to come to the point where he had to affirm himself and say, me, Paul, I can do it. I am capable. I am able of doing all of these things, right? I am capable of doing it. So we need to get ourselves to that point, Tyler. It's very, very important that we get ourselves to the point where we so believe that God, I mean, that we can do certain things, right? That we're not waiting for the validation of people. Let the validation of people be an added advantage to already pre-existing advantage that you have, right? Let it not be the primary advantage. Let it not be the primary motivation, but let it be the added advantage so that when the place is silent, the voice of your own support can still motivate you. The voice of your own support for you can still motivate you. What happens if you find yourself in a place where it's just only you? Who motivates you in that season, right? You need to really, really rise up and believe in yourself, Tyler. You need to really rise up and believe in yourself. Now, I'm talking to me also because it's the, 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 the sad thing about the human nature is that, you know, we, we usually flip from one side of, oh, we can make it, we can make it. And somehow, sometimes we have all of those moments where we don't necessarily believe you get we believe in ourselves again so i'm talking to myself you know that i've got to learn to support binga i've got to learn to support me i have to be my number one fan right i have to be my number one supporter right um 
I need to be as passionate about me as anybody is as passionate about me. In fact, I should be the most passionate about me, right? Compared to any other person. So if anybody celebrates Binga, if people say, Binga, you're doing this, or you're making exceptional um, strides in this area, you're making exceptional um, um, progress in a certain line of endeavor, right? I should be able to give myself even more, right? I should be able to give myself even more and say that, okay, yes, Binga, you're doing great. You're really, really making a lot of progress. I should be able to tell myself the truth also that no, we need to improve on all of these things because that's what fans do. Do you understand? Sometimes they give their own opinion. They're like, no, do it this way. We should do it this way. And smart, um, smart organizations listen to their fans. Smart organizations listen to their fans because those are the people that they're selling whatever product to. So they listen to their fans, right? Very, very important, right? So I want to ask you this same question, Tyler. Are you your own number one fan? Are you your own number one fan? That's a question you need to answer. If somebody else is the number one fan of your life, then quickly give them the number two position. You should occupy the number one position as a fan of yourself. Very important, right? Very important. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for consistently giving us a word, consistently showing us how you want our lives to be. Father, help us to discern the grace that we carry and be willing to give as much support to ourselves as we will give to other people. Help us, O oh God, from the depth of our hearts to truly love ourselves, to truly love what we do, to truly appreciate the gifts and the callings that you have given us. Yes, your word says that you gave them according to their several abilities. You gave one five, you gave one two, you gave one one. But Lord, you're giving them was based on their abilities and every ability should be valued. Lord, I know that with time, you will give us more. But Lord, within this space that you have given us, we will value it, we will cherish it, we will celebrate it and we will improve on it. And we will show you, Lord, that with every action that we take, that we are truly, truly appreciative and value what you have given us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for helping us consistently. In Jesus' name, amen. So I really do hope that this episode blessed you. As usual, please share it with other people. You know, connect with Dear Tyler on all social media pages. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. You can be part of the Dear Tyler community if you're interested. You know, so you could just message us on any of those platforms and we'll definitely respond to you. And yeah, you could be part of the community. Thank you so much, Tyler. So this is me signing out. Remember that I love you, I believe in you, and I'm always rooting for you. Bye.